Hello everyone and welcome back to our bizarre and unusual world. Today I'm going to be talking about a missing person and an unsolved mystery. Today's episode will be all about the disappearance of Jean Spangler. So as usual for this series, I cover the who, what, when, where, why, and how of the topic for each episode. So let's start with the when for this case. This case is very old Hollywood and takes place October 7th, 1949. And as you may have guessed, the where is Hollywood, California. So what? What exactly is the mystery or the unsolved components of this disappearance of Jean Spangler? Let me go ahead and give you a little bit of backstory about Jean. She was born in Seattle, Washington on September 2nd, 1923. Although her family did move a lot, she ended up graduating from high school in LA uh, in 1941. Now, she almost immediately got into modeling for some clothing companies, as well as dancing. She was basically starting her career in Hollywood. A year after graduating high school in 1942, Jean did marry her high school sweetheart, Dexter, but they were anything but sweet. They had problems right off the bat, and really the only reason they kind of tried to stick it out is because they did have a daughter together. In 1944, they had their daughter, Christine. And it wasn't actually long before Dexter, her husband, went off to war. Now, considering things were not the best with them, Jean actually started seeing someone on the side while her husband was off at war. His name was Scotty, and they were just having a great old time. I'm pretty sure that they were living together while her husband would send money home for their family to save up. Uh, they were blowing all the money. <laughs> Jean and Scotty together were blowing everything that Dexter sent home. There are some reports that say the day her husband got home is the day that they filed for divorce, but she wasn't exactly staying with Scotty either. Uh, her lawyer had reported that she showed up to his office one time with a black eye and some bruises and basically said that Scotty had roughed her up and had threatened her and so on. So in 1948, they started a very bitter custody battle for their daughter. And with what little stardom Jean had, the tabloids and the press like picked it up like it was a TV show for people to watch. They were very much a part of the court dates and all of the things that were happening with this custody battle between Jean and Dexter. And in turn, this press coverage like actually made her a little bit more famous or made her face more known. Now, Dexter was wanting full custody of their daughter because he claimed that Jean's lifestyle within Hollywood was not fitting for their child. Uh, he basically was portraying her as a party girl, that she loved the nightlife and everything that kind of came with getting into the world of Hollywood and all of that jazz. So that was basically his argument on wanting full custody for their daughter. And Jean was a very busy woman. She was working constantly with different modeling jobs, dancing jobs, uh, parts in movies, even if it was just like small little background bits. All of her friends described her as very bright and bubbly, friendly even. And she hung out with a lot of different people, people she met on set, um, people from the rich side of town, uh, people that were just kind of the same level as her, and even some members of the mob. So she was pretty much friends with a lot Lot of different people. But whatever slander that Dexter tried to portray his ex-wife as didn't work because Jean actually got custody of their daughter at the end of the custody battle. So jumping ahead to fall of 1949, a friend of Jean's claims that Jean came to her and told her that she was three months pregnant. Um, she did not have any interest in keeping this child. Um, Jean claimed that she knew who the father was, but she was not going to tell anybody who the father was. This friend also claimed that in this same conversation, Jean kind of alluded that she would be coming into some money soon and perhaps things in life would be changing for her. 
So on October 7th, 1949, Jean came downstairs to greet and say goodbye to her family. It was just her daughter, Christine, and her sister-in-law, Sophie. Her mother had moved in with her to help care for Christine after the custody win, but her mom was actually out of town visiting family. So Jean came downstairs, kissed her daughter, um, and told her sister-in-law that she was off to do a night shoot for a film. She also mentioned she may stop by her ex-husband's house to talk about furthering the child support for their daughter. And with that, she left for the evening, and that was actually the last time that a family member saw Jean. The last place that she was officially seen was actually at a store up the road. She had told the sales clerk that she was looking to buy a purse for her daughter. Um, other people noted that she seemed to be waiting for someone, or there was even a mention of like her waving at someone in the parking lot. But no matter, she had waited at that store for a bit, and at 6 o'clock she called home to check on her daughter and to inform her sister-in-law that uh, she was at work and that she would be working late. And uh, so anyway, she called me from town and country. Yeah, uh, there was a little market over there mm -hmm. at six o'clock, and she said, um, "I'll let you know." Uh, she always would let me know when she was wherever she went. She'd leave the phone number there that I could call her in case anything something happened at home. And then if she was going to leave, she would call me and tell me I'm leaving, but I'll call you again when I get to the new spot. But when she left back at 6 o'clock, the last call that I had from her, she uh, sound, looked like he, she was in a hurry. Like whoever it was, she was in a phone booth, and she saw the car, so she had to hang up in a hurry. That was the last time I heard from her. It does need to be noted that all of the studios that Jean had worked with in the past didn't have any sort of night shoots happening on that particular date. So the next morning, Sophie, her sister-in-law, had not heard from her and she never came home. So of course she was concerned and she called the police to report Jean as missing. Now, the police assumed that she was out partying or she would come home eventually, you know? She's part of this Hollywood lifestyle, you know? She's probably just up for something and she'll be home eventually. So they didn't actually take it seriously for a few days, but Sophie was immediately concerned Jean loved her daughter greatly, and for her to not come home and check on her child was a big red flag for her family members. It wasn't until a discovery at the Ferndale entrance of Griffin Park in Los Angeles that the police started taking this missing case serious. So a ranger of the park had found a purse lying on one of the paths. The purse strap was ripped from it, so it looked as if there had been some sort of struggle. Someone pulled the purse from a shoulder or yanked it back and forth. No matter what it was, it looked as if the purse had been through a struggle. It was very easy to identify whose purse it was. Inside was Jean's ID as well as her like Actors Guild card, so they immediately knew that it was Jean's purse. There was no money found in the purse, but according to her family, Family members she hadn't had any cash on her that night so they didn't expect it to be anything like a robbery there was also something very important in this purse and it was a handwritten note this note read Kirk can't wait any longer going to see dr. Scott it will work out best while mother is away so the investigation brought in a handwriting expert, and according to this person, he determined that this was Jean's handwriting on this note found in her purse. Now they also searched the rest of the park, um, looking for any other evidence or sign of Jean, and nothing else was found except for this purse on one of the paths. So diving into a couple theories that police and investigators immediately thought after discovering this note. So the Dr. Scott name mentioned in this note, they immediately assumed that he was some sort of abortion doctor. According to the friend, she had not been interested in keeping the pregnancy, and it seemed as if maybe she was trying to move things along, according to that note. Now they looked into Dr. Scott's within the area. Um, they found several, but none of them that were fitting the potential like 
abortion doctor line on the streets there was rumors that there was someone under that name performing abortions and obviously back then they were illegal and very dangerous so chances are the doctor's real name probably wasn't Dr. Scott probably why they didn't find any leads going through and looking for that particular person another thing that investigators focused on within the note was the name Kirk all of them immediately thought to a very popular actor in the time Kirk Douglas. Now, he had actually shot a movie with Jean. She had just been part of the back of the movie. She wasn't a main star or anything, but there is the potential that they ran in the same circles. Um, could have been a different Kirk, but investigators did kind of think to Hollywood glamour and Kirk Douglas. Now, it's very interesting about this idea of Kirk Douglas being the person she's writing to. He actually called the police and the investigators before they even had a chance to reach out to him, which they found weird, which is a little weird, but he had to call the investigators and tell them that he was not the Kirk she was writing to, that he had met her a couple times on set, he never dated her, and uh, he had no idea what had happened to her, basically. Um, a little weird for him to jump the gun like that and just immediately contact the investigators and tell them this. Uh, maybe he was just trying to be cautious or maybe he knew more than he was letting on. Now according to him, his alibi was uh, recovering from the flu in Palm Springs. I don't know how much of an alibi that is unless there were people with him recovering from the flu. Like if he was by himself, I don't feel like that's a good alibi, but that's what he told the police. So another interesting part and theory kind of to this case is the same night that Jean went missing, two of her mobster type friends also disappeared. That was Dave Ogle and Frank Nicoli. Now these two guys were actually scheduled to testify against a higher up mob boss. So some people say that they like hit the road and got out of town. Others say they like went to swim with the fishes, you know, whatever the case may be, when you compare it to the date that Jean went missing, it's very interesting. Like was she involved with something with them? So because of Jean's disappearance, the custody of her daughter Christine got really messy. Her ex-husband Dexter obviously wanted full custody of his daughter, but Jean's mother wanted none of that. She was fighting custody for him very hard, and the custody battle actually lasted four years between them. During that time, Dexter missed like four different court appearances, leading the judge to hold him in contempt of court and actually place a warrant out for his arrest because of missing these court dates. Now, what kind of sucks is uh, a couple days after the warrant was issued, Dexter and his new wife fled town like they bounced with Christine, the daughter. I feel like the why and the who of this case kind of merged together of why did Jean go missing, who was some of the suspects, who was involved, and of course all of these are just theories because Jean's missing persons case is unsolved. We don't know what happened to her. So some suspects. If you go back, you have Scotty, the boyfriend that Jean was seeing on the side. According to Jean's lawyer, he had been violent with her and threatened her, threatened to kill her if she ever left him. And of course she did leave him. So did he come back with like a vengeance and do something to Jean? Then we go to potentially someone at the store that she was last seen at. Uh, people suggest that it looked like she was waiting for someone, or did she leave with someone? Was it someone she knew or someone she met at the store? Could they have been involved in her disappearance somehow? Another theory relates to the abortion doctor. The idea that something could have went wrong and to protect himself, he got rid of Jean's body, like something went wrong with the procedure and she died or something to that effect and to protect himself, he got rid of her. Uh, some of the investigators thought that she may have been going to Mexico to have that procedure and she just never made it back. So all of these kind of go together with the sketchy scene of the behind the scenes abortions and how everything worked back then. 
And then there's the connection to like the mob. Was she more involved with the mob than people knew? Um, she was seen and some of her friends knew that she was friends with some of like the mobster guys. And we had those two guys that went missing. Did she leave with them or did she get involved and was she killed or taken out because she was friends with them? There is also the theory that she was having an affair with someone in the spotlight and that resulted in this pregnancy. So was she removed or killed to keep things quiet, to keep the relationship quiet, or to keep the pregnancy quiet? Um, some of the names that pop up obviously is Kirk Douglas again. Did they have any sort of relationship? Did he do anything to her? Um, is this why he called the police immediately to try and cover his tracks? I don't know how common of a name Kirk was in the 40s, um, but I mean, even the investigators said that they immediately thought to Kirk Douglas, and it is odd that he called in so early. So was that note meant for him? Because her friend had suggested that Jean said she was going to be coming into money, other people debate if she was blackmailing someone. Um, that could be with information she had, with the pregnancy even, um, if, if it was someone in the spotlight. Was it another celebrity? Was it someone rich? Was it someone within the mob? Uh, was she blackmailing someone and did she think that she was going to be getting money in return but the blackmail backfired for her? Now Jean's mother, for her whole life, up until the day she died, thought that Dexter, the ex-husband, had been responsible for her daughter's disappearance. Uh, Jean had suggested that she was going to go to Dexter's house that night to discuss child support. And something interesting, when the ex-husband and his new wife were interviewed by police, their answers differed a bit. Uh, Dexter said that he had not seen Jean in a few weeks, while his new wife said that they had seen her the day she went missing. There is also an interview clip with her sister-in-law Sophie where Sophie mentions that detectives told her that Dexter had some sort of like scratches on his face when they interviewed him, which is a little bit of weird timing. Diving in further to those ideas, um, Dexter's new wife, Lynn, had her own kind of ties to the mob, so some people suggest that she put a hit out on Jane so that they could get custody of the daughter, or, I mean, did they just take Jean out themselves so that they could keep their daughter and uh, keep her away from Jean? I do wonder about the timeline for the purse. Like, how did the purse get in the park? Was someone trying to get rid of the purse, um, like out a car window, or just like throw it into the park? Was Jean ever at the park? Was she at the park with somebody else? You would think that they would have found some sort of more evidence if anything um, had happened to Jean in the park, if she had been killed there or anything like that. But it's just the purse with the torn strap. So I do wonder how exactly it got to that location. I mean, if she had been walking there alone, did something more random happen to her in just like general crime sense that isn't connected to any of these other people? We don't know. Just the purse being found there is very interesting to me. So how is this case known today? You know, a lot of people actually don't know Jean Spangler's name. Some people like relate it to Elizabeth Short, the Black Dahlia, probably because of the 40s era Hollywood vibe, um, but they're very different cases. Elizabeth Short, the Black Dahlia's case was obviously a homicide, and Jean Spangler is still a missing person. There was no body ever found. Um, there was no even evidence that she was killed. They don't know what happened to her. Now, her mother and her sister-in-law claim that she would have never left um, of her free will because she loved her daughter so much. So they think that something else happened to her, whether she was taken or killed. They do not believe that Jean would have just left her daughter behind. Now, back in the day, because people did know her face from the different press she had received and the whole missing persons case, uh, reports of her showing up in different states uh, did come up. Um, there was some in Southern California, all over California really, um, also in Las Vegas and some in Mexico, I believe. But no leads ever came from any of that, if it was actually her or if it was just a lookalike. Nothing ever came of it. 
It's a very interesting case and I feel like my mind bounces around to a couple different theories. The ex-husband definitely has like motive and there's some sketchiness around some of the interviews with him and the whole idea of like getting Gene out of the way so he can get custody of his daughter. But then I go back to that note that was found in her purse. Like who was Kirk? Like was he the baby daddy? Like was it Kirk Douglas? Was it a different Kirk? Like, who was she telling and was she writing them about going to an abortion doctor? Is that what the note was about? There's a lot of different questions with it. And obviously the note never got to the person. Either she didn't have a chance or someone put it back in the purse. We'll never know. But they did leave that very important note behind. I mean, like I said, I do think it's kind of interesting that the police immediately thought about Kirk Douglas because of the famous name. Since this happened in the 40s, there have been some kind of sketchy stories and reports surrounding that particular person. And so it's interesting that he's tied to, potentially tied to a case from 1949 as well. Did Jean's disappearance have to do with her pregnancy or something she saw or someone she knew? All of these questions that we will probably never get the answers to because this case was from 1949 and nobody has ever been discovered. Um, a lot of people suggest that she was, if she was killed, the potential of her being dumped in some form of water or buried out in the desert. And if that's the case, like they're never going to find a body for that. The woman, if she's the victim, is uh, very often painted in a negative light to explain the gaps that exist in the case and almost as if to imply, well, whatever happened, it was her fault. This is just one of those old Hollywood cases that I don't think a lot of people know about and I found it very interesting and I thought that I would share it with you guys. Thanks so much for watching everyone and I will see you in the next Our Bizarre and Unusual World. Have a great night.